God, let in pour. I'm asking you in my life, Lord. And all my friends on the street, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, Lord. Let it pour. We receive your leadership of your Holy Spirit. Oh, let it rain, let it pour. The power of your Spirit. Let it rain, let it pour, power of your spirit, power of your spirit, let it rain, let it pour.
serving the Lord again, risen and serving, rise up from that bed in the name of Jesus, shall rise up in the name of no more gold oxygen, increase the percentage of oxygen, oxygenate his blood right now. Sending the word, healed in the self same hour. Yeah, healed in the self same hour. Jack, Jack, come up, up the bed of sickness. Come, Lord, and decree the word of the Lord, healed, perfectly whole. We decree it today. Send the word, send the word, healing virtue. Send the word, healing virtue, healing Jeff. Come forth, man of God, in the name. In the name, in the name, in the name. Keep declaring and decreeing. Jeff is up off the bed in his own strength and power. 94%, 94% oxygen in his bloodstream. 94, I call out the number 94%. 94% in the name, in the name. And yeah, 94% oxygen. They're going to see it rise and go, what happened? The Lord intervened. The Lord intervene, the Lord intervene. The Lord intervene, the Lord intervene. Thank you, Sylvia. Healing rain, strength, and peace.
interesting story about Valentine's Day is that the prophet Bob Jones had uh, had died when he was young and went to heaven and the Lord told him that he had to go back and he said why I don't want to go back he said no you have to go back he said when you learn how to love you can come back here Bob Jones passed away a number of years ago on Valentine's Day Revelation the highlighted scriptures are Revelation 11, 3 through 6. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy, speak under my divine inspiration, foretelling events and things pertaining to my kingdom while operating in my prophetic office. They will prophesy 1,260 days which is 42 months or three and one half years clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. Wow. Wow. They have power to shut the skies so that no rain will fall during the three and a half years they prophesy and to turn rivers and oceans to blood and to send every kind of plague upon the earth as often as they wish. From Ryan Megan's commentary on it, he says, The two witnesses' ministry is described like the ministries of Moses and Elijah, but even greater. They can devour their enemies with fire that comes from their mouths. They can shut the heavens so that it won't rain turning water to blood. They can do all these things at their own will. 
They are not merely foretelling what is predestined by their will and their word that these things come to pass. And from Ellicott's commentary, it says the two witnesses are called the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before God. I, I, I don't want us to run by this. They stand before God. So, and they're doing all this stuff. I, I know this is great tribulation stuff. It's heavy duty. There's profound wickedness and evil on the earth. But two witnesses, whoever they are, because we can't know beyond a shadow of a doubt. People can guess, but it's not, it's not declared in this book of Revelation. But they said the two olive trees and the lampstands are a reference to Zechariah 4. Joshua and Zerubbabel they're described as the two olive trees and get ready the name was actually the sons of oil <laughs> these are the two anointed witnesses Josh, Joshua and Zerubbabel back in the day which is what the commentators refer back to the other place it's found in the scripture Zechariah 4 and they're referred to as the anointed sons of oil are the sons of anointed oil. They stood before the Lord in their ministry, and Joshua and Zechariah, or Zerubbabel, were rebuilding the temple and restoring Israel. As to the identity of the two witnesses, some see them as Enoch and Elijah, because neither one of those men died. They were taken bodily to heaven. That's pretty, pretty powerful. But some see them as Moses and Elijah because of the miracles they performed. And they represent, Moses and Elijah represent the law and the prophets. At the end of the day, the Bible doesn't tell us who they are, so we simply cannot say with certainty. And the olive trees are the two anointed ones. I just got to let you know that's the name that the Romans gave us and heathen people back in the day after the resurrected Christ. The followers are the little Christ. They're the little anointed ones. Yes, we still are today. Which stand, when we see the returned Jewish exiles, even among them there were anointed witnesses declaring the truth in an anointed fashion, the word of the Lord. Such witnesses are found in almost every era of human history. God had anointed oil witnesses. Man, I love that. When we see the return, what represents the eternal truth of the oil of gladness and the strength of God. And check it out, Zechariah 4. The eternal truth of the oil of gladness and strength of God. And it will rest on those who rely not on power and might, but on God's spirit. Be the anointed one he made you. Starting at verse 1, chapter 10. When Kent was preparing this, I think it was maybe two nights ago, or it might have been last night, I'm not sure. When he talked about those two witnesses, I said there will... The Bible is true, 100%. Every jot and tittle will be, will come to pass. And the Bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die, and then comes judgment. And I said, well, there are two people in the Bible who never died, and that would be Enoch and Elijah. So if Enoch and Elijah are the two witnesses on the earth that preach for the first three and a half years of the tribulation, the Bible goes on to say, and then comes judgment. Right. It's appointed an amended die once, and then comes judgment. So if there are two people who never died, and they die three and a half years into the tribulation, then comes judgment. That's going to be a pretty heavy way, baby. Pretty heavy. All of these things we're hearing about, these bowls and vials and scrolls, and lightning and angels and... Verse 1, I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. 
His face was like the sun and his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book open in his hand and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now when the seven thunders sounded, their, uttered their voices, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying, Seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered, and do not write them. Then the angel shouted, cried out loudly, like the roaring of a lion. When the seven thunders spoke, I started to write. But I heard a voice from heaven say, Keep hidden what the seven thunders said, and do not write them down. Roar of the lion. From Hosea 11.10 They will go after the Lord, and he will roar like a lion. When he roars, his children will hurry. They will come trembling to him from the west. And Amos 3.8 The lion has roared, a symbol of coming judgment. Who wouldn't be afraid? The Lord God has spoken. Who will not prophesy? The Roar Your Lion of Judah is roaring today. Our Lion of Judah has many things to say. Open your heart Who created heaven and the things that are in it? 
the earth and the things that are in it and the sea and the things that are in it, that there be no delay any longer, no more delay. People say, oh, I got till tomorrow, next week, next summer, I'll get saved. I would never fool with salvation today. Salvation is knocking on the, the door of your heart. But in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished. As he declared to his servants, the prophets, and I appreciate what, what I'm about to read is the EXB. It's the expanded Bible because they said the mystery is the good news of God that all men can be saved. I wouldn't have known that. So here's the expanded Bible. Verse 6, the angel promised there'll be no more waiting. There's no more time left. But in the days when the seventh angel is ready to blow his trumpet, God's secret, his mystery, his hidden plan will be finished and completed. It'll be just as he announced to his servants, the prophets. Hear it again. I love it. When the seventh angel was ready to blow, wow, blow his trumpet, God's secret, his mystery, the hidden plan will be finished. It's accomplished. The secret hidden plan is the good news of God. The good news God told just as he announced to his servant, servants the prophet and Matthew Henry finishes it by saying no longer any delay in fulfilling the predictions of this book wow some place in time it's all going to happen wow everything will be put into speedy execution <laughs> I mean the, it, Matthew Henry he, he's 1706 18th century right I always get it messed up and this guy said, back in the day, what is that, 300 years ago, let's see, 1806, yeah, no, it's 300. He said, everything will be put into speedy execution. When the mystery of God is finished, time itself shall be no more. I don't think you heard me. Time itself, he said, will be no more. All things that are, but all things shall be forever fixed. So time is itself is swallowed up in eternity. <laughs> I got to do it again. <laughs> I mean, it's just worth knowing. The way he said, there'll be speedy execution of everything will be put into, into action. When the mystery of God is finished, time itself shall be no more. Think of the day and the hour. We don't know how far away it is, but all things will be forever fixed then our history passed so time itself is swallowed up into eternity verse 8 then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said go take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth so I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it, and it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became wow. bitter. And he said to me, you must prophesy yes. again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. It will be sour, bitter in your stomach, because it is a message of judgment. But in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey, because it is God's word, and because it brings salvation and vindication to his people. In my mouth it tasted sweet as honey, but after I ate it, it was sour, bitter in my stomach. Then I was told, you must prophesy again about, my, about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. 
from Joseph Benson's commentary, this prophecy is revealing the providences of God, his divine guidance and care wow. during the period of the seventh trumpet. There will be great opposition to true believers and persecution of the faithful ones. So there this, a revelation of divine protection during the time of trial. It is said to John, you have not finished the whole of your work, recording the visions of the Lord so far, but you must again prophesy before too many peoples and nations. You must prophesy again to many peoples and nations, John. You have to prophesy again about the things of the living God. You must prophesy again, John, to many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings, and there it is. It's not over yet. The good news still goes for it, John. You must prophesy again to many tongues and kings you must prophesy again it's not finished yet thank God yeah prophesy good news a great joy you can still be saved what good news a great joy you can still have salvation John you must prophesy again about many peoples and nations, your pro how they're going to come in. To me, you guys, it means through the kingdom of priests. If you go back to Revelation 5, 9, and 10, this is all about raising up the worship leaders, the apostles and the evangelists, the fivefold offices from every people, tongue, and nation and dialect. up take this read i want you to measure well measure the temple of god secondly i want you to measure the altar see how big it is and then count those who are there worshiping right now but leave out the court which is outside the temple do not measure it for it's been given to the gentiles and they will tread the holy city underfoot same length of time that the two witnesses prophesy 
42 months, three and a half years, 36 months plus six. And I will give power to my two witnesses and they will prophesy. They will speak under my divine inspiration. This is the word in the Greek. They'll be speaking by my divine inspiration for telling events and things pertaining to my kingdom and my ways. They will be operating in my prophetic office. Wow. Let it sink in. What are they doing? They're operating in the book of Revelation, great tribulation time. I so thank God the prophetic is still around. Just think if it wasn't here, that would be super tough, man. But they're prophesying under my divine inspiration. They'll prophesy 1,260 days, 42 months, three and one half years, and they'll be clothed in sackcloth. Then I was given a measuring stick, and I was told, what, John? Well, go. Go and measure the temple of God. Then measure the altar and count the number of worshipers who are there. Worshipers are right in the thick of it. It's right here. That's a New Living Translation. Go count the number of worshipers, John. And then the the, uh, expanded Bible says, get up and measure, one, the temple of God, two, the altar. It It must be important, keeping it holy. And include, don't forget, John, to include the people that are worshiping, worshiping, worshiping there. Don't forget to include the people who are worshiping there. See you worshipers, you count in the Lord at a high, high level. Worshipers at any time or place in the Bible count. At a high, high level, worshiping the living God. Make straight a highway in the wilderness. The worshipers are there. We'll be on the playing field, interceding and praying. Deep worship. Count the number of worshipers, John. Don't make sure you include them. Don't leave them out. We're measuring the house in the inner court. Yeah. There were still priests worshiping there. There were those who brought their private sacrifices to the Lord. They were worshiping there. Worshiping worshipers. Right in the middle of chapter 11, they were there. All you deep worshipers, we were, we'll still make a difference. Whatever age or era we live in, I was so struck by this. I have never really seen this before. I'm, I've never done the, my own personal study with my friends online. I said, God, I can't get over to that. Worshiping there, count the worshipers, John. They're important to the heart of the Father and the heart of Jesus. They're still worshiping in the middle of the great tribulation. Somebody was worshiping there. He said, measure the house, the inner court, Joseph Benson, where the altar stood. Because see, the priests worshiped God and they were performing their duties, the duties of their office. So we still find worshipers, people offering sacrifices holy unto the Lord. Also into which there's another category. There were people who were coming, offering private sacrifices to the Lord for themselves. They were admitted. My God. They weren't kept out. They, were, they came to worship. Man, do you guys get the drift on this? It's so good. It's a proper representation of the body of Christ and his true worship of such as were true worshipers of him. This is Joseph Benson's eight Benson, his commentary, 1857. Still we see a proper representation of the body of Christ and his true worship of such as were true worshipers of him. It's still found there. Hallelujah. Keep going, Carla. 
So Joseph Benson's commentary goes on to say the reason St. John is being commanded to measure the inner court and the temple was to show that during all of this period there were some true Christians who were living to the measure of God's worship, word and worship. They will prophesy, speak under my divine inspiration, foretelling events and things pertaining to my kingdom while operating in my prophetic office. And I will grant the power of prophecy to my two witnesses. The witness's message will deal with the need to repent, turn to God, or face his judgment. It will include warnings of judgments to come. Sackcloth. When the prophets wore such a garment, they were prophesying judgment. They took a posture of mourning, a sad posture. When the people wanted to repent, they would clothe themselves in sackcloth and put ashes on their head. Wow. Man. That was Revelation, a look at things to come from Hadava, Hadava Messianic Ministries. These are the two olive trees and verses, the two lampstands. Verses 4, 5, and 6. She's back in the scripture. I want to make sure yeah, people verses 4, 5, and 6. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in the same manner. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. Verse 6. They have power to shut the sky so that no rain will fall. During the three and a half years they prophesy to turn rivers and oceans to blood, to send every kind of plague upon the earth as often as they wish. But hear this. The two witnesses called the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before God. This is special and very important because it gives them huge authority in all of the earth standing before God. And in their prophesying, they're bearing witness. They're giving testimony of the great Redeemer. And so I was sitting here going, Lord, what, what are they what are they prophesying and speaking? Well, in their prophesying, they're bearing witness and giving testimony of our great Redeemer and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It is clear and powerful. Clear and very powerful. The witness's message will also deal with the need to repent, to turn to God and or face his judgment. And it includes the warning of judgments to come. I want to take a minute because this is so powerful here. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. From the very first days at our first charismatic church and when Carl and I met and were married, this, this scripture was running around the face of the earth. So it's Zechariah 4, 6. Carla will speak to it in a minute. But this reference to Zechariah 4, where Joshua and Zerubbabel were, are described as the two olive trees are the anointed sons of oil. They stood before the Lord as well, but they were rebuilding the temple and restoring Israel. Zechariah 4, 3 through 7. These are the two olive trees. I'm reading Zechariah now. These are the two olive trees by it. One on the right of the bowl and one on the left. I asked the angel who talked with me, Sir, what are these? And the angel said, Don't you know what they are? No, sir, I said. 4 6, Zechariah 4 6. Zechariah 4 6. Then he told me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. 
You will not succeed by your own strength or by your own power, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. You will succeed, Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, because of my spirit, though you are few and weak. God's message to Zerubbabel, you can't force these things. They only come about through my spirit, says God of the angel armies. So big mountain, who do you think you are? Next to Zerubbabel, you're nothing but a molehill. That was from the message. And the voice says, the eternal commander of heavenly armies has said to this to Zerubbabel, your strength and prowess will not be enough to finish my temple. But my spirit will be. And he says this to those thwarting Zerubbabel's efforts. Who are you, big, mighty, great mountain? In front of Zerubbabel, you will become flat land, a level plain. And he will bring out the topmost stone, the capstone, shouting for a mid-shouting. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Blessings, blessings upon it. Grace, grace to it. From the expanded Bible. Wait a minute. Read it again. Verse 7. I want to want you guys to hear this. Who are you, big, mighty, great mountain? In front of Zerubbabel, you will become flat land, a level plain. And he will bring out the topmost stone, the capstone, shouting or amid shouting. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Blessings, blessings upon it. Grace, grace to it. But let me sing now because we already did those other two. I, I want you to know I did not know that we'd end up with Zachariah. But the two witnesses, the two olive trees and lampstands, God says, in the midst of any tribulation, any trial, it's not by your power and might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by, I love it. We're going to stay here for a second. You will not succeed by your own strength, Zerubbabel, or by your own power, son.
Jesus said you'll be a level plain. You'll become a flat land in front of Zerubbabel, a level plain. In Big Mountain, you become the flat land, a level plain before my servant drew Zerubbabel. It says he'll bring out the topmost stone, the capstone. He will be shouting and all the people will be shouting. The capstone, the topmost stone, the cornerstone, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Who is that topmost stone? Who is our cornerstone? Everybody's shouting on this dream. He's beautiful. He's beautiful. Blessing upon blessings come from the cornerstone. Grace, grace, grace. Beautiful, full of grace, grace unto grace. Lord, you're beautiful. Oh, you're beautiful. Blessing upon blessing in you. Grace upon grace, Lord, you're beautiful. Lord, you're beautiful. Blessing upon blessing. How about this today? This is so good, man. And here's what I say. Not by my inner power. Let's sing it one more time before we close out the stream. It's not by your mind. It's not by your power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by your mind. It's not by your power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. Almighty. You'll not succeed. Strength and your own power, even though you're the governor of Judah, though you're few and very weak, you'll succeed by the power of my Holy Spirit, not by your own strength. And this is so good for every one of us today. We pray, Father, now in Jesus' name. Let us have thorough revelation of what each verse in the book of Revelation is saying. We want to grow in the knowledge of you and who you are, Lord. And the knowledge of why you put this as the 66th book of the Bible. Our hearts are yours. We put all that we know on the altar of prayer and worship and say, amplify into us. By your light, the revelation that we need to run this race and to finish it with strength and in your glory. We pray and dedicate our lives again today, Lord, to serving you and fulfilling our godly destiny, prophetic godly destiny. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, all right, then. <laughs> Amen. Oh, my God. And listen, man, that was a Holy Spirit tagging that into the Zechariah 4. Um, that, that's so powerful. Like I said, it's been in our life all along. But I believe God's bringing that back so people will not be exhausted and wear themselves out totally. So hope you love this stream today. Thank you for praying for us. We, we do appreciate it. It's so important that we have intercession and prayer, but the blessing of God and the wisdom of God is not a joke to me. I am I believe that Carl and I are still here because of intercessors that prayed for us uh, through the years, but also at specific moments when we were under attack from the enemy. Think about what I'm saying uh, about the buffeting. Uh, Carl was watching this guy about, you'll be buffeted. Oh, we've been buffeted. All right. But I, I believe through the power of the Holy Spirit and intercession, we got through to still be here 46 years later, which is astonishing. I'm even saying that. Anyway, we love you guys. Thank you for supporting us financially as well. Carla's going to share something. Yeah, I also I also want to thank uh, Sylvia for the Valentine's. <laughs> Sylvia, that was very special, man. Send a Valentine to Carla and to Matt. <laughs> and, they, and Matt's kids really enjoyed the bubbles. <laughs> There it is. Anyway, we love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. We will be doing the back half of 11. Fasten your seatbelt. Maybe read it ahead of time. It's pretty profound. All right, God bless you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace.